The race to develop oral GLP-1 medications is heating up with nearly a dozen groundbreaking drugs in various stages of development, from big players like Eli Lilly and Novo Nordisk to rising biotech stars. These once daily pills provide promise to revolutionize obesity treatment by offering the same life-changing weight loss results as injectables without the needles. If successful, they could expand access, reduce costs, and make treating the disease of obesity easier and more effective than ever. Could these game-changing pills be the tipping point in the fight against the global obesity crisis? Let's dive into the contenders and their potential to change everything. Hello, I'm Christopher Durham, and my wife Lorraine and I are The Downsized. Over the past year, our lives have been transformed by a journey that's about far more than weight loss. It's about reclaiming our health, building a brighter future, and inspiring others who are battling the disease of obesity. Through the power of GLP-1 medications, lifestyle changes, and a shared commitment to this adventure, Lorraine and I have collectively lost over 130 pounds. That's not just a number. It represents countless small victories, setbacks, and learning moments along the way. For us, this story began last September 29th when I took my first dose of a GLP-1 medication, terzepatide. I started with compounded terzepatide from a telehealth provider, then transitioned to the branded versions Monjaro and Zepbound, after Zepbound was approved to treat the disease of obesity. From personal experience, I can confidently say that my results have been consistent across all these medications. Each one has helped me shed weight, improve my overall health, and most importantly, gain control over a disease that once felt overwhelming. As of today, I've lost 86 pounds, and every one of those pounds came off not because of a magic pill, but because these medications gave me the tools I needed to make lasting changes. GLP-1s help with weight loss by reducing appetite, improving blood sugar regulation, and making it easier to develop healthier habits. For someone like me who has struggled with weight for much of my life, this wasn't just about losing weight. It was about gaining freedom from the constant battle with hunger and the stigma that comes with obesity. Lorraine and I are here to share our story, not as experts, but as real people navigating the complex, sometimes frustrating world of obesity treatment. Along the way, we've learned a lot about GLP-1 medications, the healthcare system, and the importance of advocating for yourself. Whether you're new to these medications or have been on this path for a while, our goal is to provide honest, relatable insights that can help you on your adventure. Now, before we dive deeper into today's topic, I want to remind everyone of something very important. Always consult your healthcare provider before starting any medication or treatment plan. I am not a doctor. Lorraine is not a doctor. We're happy to share our experiences, but make sure you are talking to your doctor. While GLP-1s have been a game changer for Lorraine and I, they're not a one-size-fits-all solution, and it's crucial to have a professional guiding your care. Finally, please do not forget to like and subscribe and click that notification bell so you do not miss an update. This adventure is far from over and we're excited to have you along for the ride. Let's start at the beginning. Obesity is not just a personal health issue. It's a global epidemic. More than 1 billion people worldwide are classified as overweight or obese, including over 40% of adults in the United States. By 2035, that number is expected to grow to $4 billion globally, making obesity one of the most pressing public health challenges of our time. In the United States, obesity rates have soared, with 73.6% of adults either overweight or obese. This epidemic contributes to a range of chronic conditions, including type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, certain cancers, and they place an overwhelming burden on individuals, healthcare systems, and economies worldwide. The financial implications are staggering. The global obesity drug market is projected to exceed $100 billion annually in the next few years, driven by groundbreaking treatments that we know and love, GLP-1 medications. But for many, these life-changing therapies remain financially out of reach. GLP-1 medications like Wagovi, Manjaro, Zepbound, Ozempic, you name it, have revolutionized obesity treatment, but their price tags have created barriers for millions of people worldwide and millions of Americans. A single month of Wagovi here in the United States or Manjaro can cost upwards of $1,300 without insurance with limited coverage options for weight loss indications. This has drawn significant attention from both policymakers and legislators, 
Earlier this year, a congressional investigation scrutinized the pricing practices of the pharmaceutical companies and PBMs or pharmacy benefit managers, questioning why these treatments remain inaccessible for so many. In response, President Biden has proposed expanding Medicare to include coverage for obesity drugs. While this change is still under discussion, it underscores the growing recognition of obesity as a chronic disease requiring long-term comprehensive treatment. Oral GLP-1 certainly had the potential to be a game changer in the treatment of obesity. For those of us battling the disease of obesity, GLP-1s have been life-changing. While the current injectables offer unparalleled results, they also come with challenges. High costs, refrigeration and storage requirements, and of course, needles. Oral GLP-1s could address these challenges, offering millions of people a more convenient and potentially more accessible and affordable option. Rebelsis is the only FDA-approved oral GLP-1 marketed by Nova Nordisk for type 2 diabetes. While its weight loss results are less robust than injectables, its success has paved the way for a new generation of oral GLP-1 medications that could rival the efficacy of their injectable counterparts. Let's take a closer look at some of the exciting candidates in the race to develop oral GLP-1s. The pipeline. Who's leading the race, right? Who's in front? Who's going to win? What comes out first? The race to develop effective oral GLP-1 medications is heating up, as we all know, with several pharmaceutical companies making significant strides. These oral treatments could redefine the way we approach obesity and related metabolic conditions, offering a needle-free alternative to injectables. Let's take a closer look at the front runners and what makes each of these candidates stand out. Number one, or Orforglopron by Eli Lilly. We, of course, all know Eli Lilly for his F-bounded Monjaro and a host of other medications. Eli Lilly's Orforglopron is currently one of the most promising candidates in the world GLP-1 space. With phase two results showing weight loss of 9.4% to 14.7% over 36 weeks. This small molecule GLP-1 agonist has already demonstrated efficacy comparable to injectable options like Zepbound. Phase three trials are underway, and the drug is on track for a 2026 market entry. Given its strong results and Eli Lilly's track record with GLP-1 medications, or Orforglopron could become a leading option for those of us seeking a daily pill for weight loss and metabolic health. So let's take a look at some of the other ones. Number two, Amicrentin by Nova Nordisk. So Nova Nordisk is taking a dual approach with Amicrentin, a GLP-1 and amylin receptor agonist. In phase one trials, patients achieved up to 13.1% weight loss in just 12 weeks. An impressive result. This dual action mechanism could set Amicrentin apart by addressing both appetite regulation and glucose metabolism. Phase two trials are expected soon, and Nova Nordisk anticipates a 2027 market debut. If these early results hold, Amicrin could be a game changer, particularly for its rapid effectiveness. Number three, GSBR-1290 by Structure Therapeutics. Structure Therapeutics is making waves with GSBR-1290, an oral small molecule GLP-1 receptor agonist. In phase 2A studies, participants experienced up to 6.9% weight loss in 12 weeks with excellent tolerability. A phase 2B trial is slated for late 2024 with market entry projected for 2027. While GSBR-1290's weight loss results aren't as dramatic as some competitors, its safety profile and steady progress could make it a strong contender. Number four, denuglopron by Pfizer. Pfizer's contribution to the oral GLP-1 race is denuglopron, which has transitioned to a once-daily formulation after earlier trials with a twice-daily dose. Currently in phase one, the weight loss results are still pending, but Pfizer aims for market entry by 2028. While it's still early days for denuglopron, Pfizer's focus on optimizing tolerability and ease of use suggests it could become a viable option for patients seeking convenience. And number five, VK2735 by Viking Therapeutics. Viking Therapeutics is exploring a dual action approach with VK2735, which targets both GLP-1 and GIP receptors. In phase one trials, participants saw dose-dependent weight loss of up to 5.3% in just 28 days, with minimal gastrointestinal side effects. A phase two trial is expected to begin in late 2024. 
Viking's emphasis on safety and tolerability could make VK2735 an attractive option, especially for patients sensitive to side effects. Number six, CT996 by Roche. Roche and its subsidiary Genentech are developing CT996, a small molecule GLP-1 agonist that has shown 6.1% weight loss within four weeks in phase one trials. The drug's tolerability and potential for flexible dosing make it particularly exciting. Roche aims for market entry by 2028, positioning CT996 as a strong contender for patients seeking a daily oral option with quick results. Number seven, ECC5004 by AstraZeneca. AstraZeneca's ECC5004 is currently in phase one trials, showing early promise for weight loss and glycemic control. While specific weight loss percentages haven't been disclosed, the company plans to enter phase two trials by 2025 with a focus on combining ECC5004 with other treatments. AstraZeneca's strong pipeline and experience in metabolic conditions could make this drug a key player in the long run. And lastly, BLX706 by Biolexis Therapeutics. Biolexis Therapeutics is the newest entrant with preclinical results showing a remarkable 15% weight loss in obese mice over 28 days. Human trials are expected to begin in 2025, making BLX7006 a later contender in this competitive race. While it's still early, Biolexis's focus on creating a potent, cost-effective oral GLP-1 option could help address some affordability issues plaguing current treatments. So, Let's talk about maintenance because this is where it becomes exciting. Not all of these experimental drugs will make it to the market, of course, but even those that do may serve a unique purpose. One of their primary roles could be as a long-term maintenance dosing option for people who've already achieved significant weight loss using injectable medications. Dr. Catherine Duche told CNN, they may not be as effective for maximum weight loss as initial therapy, but they could be excellent for weight loss maintenance, which is a different and arguably much more important destination for lasting health benefits. Eli Lilly is already exploring these potentials with orforglopron in a weight loss maintenance trial. The study, which began this month, will evaluate its efficacy in maintaining weight loss achieved through injectable medications like Zepbound and Wagovi. Results are expected by early 2026. So, then the question, which of these really stands out? Well, among these contenders, or Orforglopron by Eli Lilly currently appears to have the edge thanks to its strong phase two results and advanced trial stage. Novo Nordisk's Amacritin is another standout with this innovative dual mechanism showing a rapid significant weight loss. Meanwhile, GSBR1290 and CT996 offer promising alternatives with excellent tolerability which could appeal to patients concerned about side effects. The oral GLP-1 race is shaping up to be one of the most exciting developments in obesity treatment, offering new hope for millions of people battling this disease. As these drugs progress through trials, we'll be watching closely to see which ones make it to market and how they transform the landscape of obesity care. The question really becomes, will oral GLP-1s change the game for treating obesity? Change in behavior could happen if new oral medications hit the market and are shown to be as or more effective than the current injectables. If they are comparable in efficacy and have similar side effects, people might prefer an oral option because it's more familiar and less daunting. Oral GLP-1 medications bring several key advantages. First of all, of course, there's an improved accessibility. Pills do not require refrigeration, making them easier to store and transport globally. They're easier to manufacture. There's a lot more factories out there and the cost to market should be significantly cheaper. Number two, there's more options. Having both injectable and oral forms allows people to choose what fits their lifestyle best. Number three, it could potentially lower costs. As I said, oral medications are simpler to manufacture, potentially reducing costs and broadening access. This could be the speed to market that we need. Number four, ease of use, well, they're pills. So for those of us who are needle averse, pills offer a more familiar and less intimidating alternative, as simple as taking a pill, of course. So there are some cautions, however. And the cautions are really what exists on the market today. 
really it's in the risks of compounded oral GLP-1. So, of course, we're advocates for compounding pharmacies and compounding terzepatide, semaglutide. But let's talk about the pills right now. So while pharmaceutical companies are working through rigorous clinical trials, compounded versions of oral GLP-1s have appeared in the market. They're state regulated, so they're not quite the same thing. But the pill provides a little extra layer that you just want to be cautious with. Dr. Maria Daniela Hurtado Andrade of the Mayo Clinic emphasizes, I do not consider them, I do not prescribe them, and I do not endorse them. Additionally, oral GLP-1 medications face significant challenges, and unlike injectables, which deliver the drug directly into the bloodstream, oral formulations must survive the harsh environment of the gastrointestinal tract. Even Nodonordisk's Rebelsis, with its advanced absorption enhancer, has a bioavailability of less than one. There are currently versions of semaglutide and terzepatide out there in oral form. We're not doctors, but based off of what we have read, it's something we would strongly evaluate, but we probably would not personally take them. The cost of them is not significantly less than the injectables, and there's really no research to say whether or not they work. So today, the injectables are the way to go. So again, talk to your doctor, not a doctor. These oral pills, it's very difficult to get the bioavailability correct. And honestly, you might just be wasting your money. Why does all this matter for people using GLP-1s that are treating obesity? Dr. Ania Yasterboff from Yale University notes, by 2030, the global prevalence of obesity is expected to reach 1 billion. Oral GLP-1s have the potential to broaden access by addressing several key barriers, affordability, storage limitations, and the needle phobia that deters some people from injectables. Dr. Greg Suvanna, a senior equity research analyst, emphasized to the digital news site Biospace the broader implications. Oral GLP-1s hold potential in lowering prices and broadening access for patients. The coming years will reveal whether these oral medica- the coming years will reveal whether these oral medications can match the efficacies of the injectables while addressing barriers like cost and accessibility. With phase two and three trials underway for many candidates, the future looks promising for people using GLP-1s to treat obesity. Thank you for joining me for this look at the future of oral GLP-1 medications. If you're new to the downsized, we'd love to have you join us again. Please do not forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our content. I'm Christopher Durham, and we are The Downsized. (laughs) 